A certified avalanche dog like Tally can do the work of about 30 rescuers in the same amount of time. Their sense of smell is 10 times greater than ours. And if someone's buried in the snow, or not even buried, but just lost in the woods, the dog can smell their scent coming up through the snowpack and tell me where to start digging to find that person. We are the first responders, and a lot of times if things go well and to our training, we can facilitate that rescue without putting anybody else in harm's way and be done quickly and efficiently and all go home safely. We gotta find somebody, I know. You wanna find somebody? Okay, Tim, let's go, search. My name's Hunter Mortensen. I'm an avalanche technician here at Breckenridge Ski Resort with my ski patrol partner, Tally, and we've been working here for eight years together. We're really fortunate here at Breckenridge. We have six avalanche rescue dogs on staff. Today, Tally's here and with her uh, coworkers and friends is Boudreaux, the golden retriever, and A up another mountain purebred mutt. The years of the big St. Bernard and Swiss mountain dog with the barrel under their neck, those dogs are built for the mountains. They're sturdy, they're hardy, they can do it. But what we're finding is they don't travel well in the snow and they're not as fast moving across the snow. And avalanche rescue is all a matter of time. So we're looking these days for dogs that are a little bit on the smaller side, a little more nimble and a little more quick. So the training, we start them six to uh, nine months old, and a lot of it is just basic obedience. And then we start building from the obedience into actual hide and go seek type games. And then we build up from there into big snow caves where we'll bury a person almost six feet deep if we have enough snow. And then the dog will start searching and having to find where that scent's coming up to play the game. And all they're really looking for is that person who they think has their toy. Oh, that's a good girl. It's about two full years of training to take your last certification test for an avalanche rescue dog and handler. So I'm certified to work with Tally. Ready? My whole last eight years of my career have been spent with her every day, all day. When we have to do our thing, we're really dependent on each other and I couldn't do what I do without her. And so it's an amazing partnership and I'm really honored and proud to be a part of this program and, and work with a dog like her. There's enough farm. It's a farm in South Africa. It's a special farm because they use ducks instead of pesticides to work in the vineyard. My name is Tenzo Matthijs. You are far enough to be a duck farmer. Pesticides are dangerous for the environment. The ducks are not dangerous. They are natural pest controllers on the farm. The snails will ruin the wine stick shelf and the ducks prevent that from happening by eating the snails. The first thing I do is I go into the garage and that is where we breed our ducks. After that, I will start feeding the ducks. Then at quarter to ten, in front of the main house, we do something like a duck parade. All our ducks is marching in one straight line. Then we send them off to go and work in the vineyards. And they will do 50 square meters per day. There is 1,071 ducks at the working group alone. But we still have some breeding ducks, and those ducks are about 300 ducks. The favorite is the crested duck. Is a duck with a type of hairstyle, like a pom pom on top of his head, so I name him Yalvis. The ducks are so close to me. They see me as their mommy because I take care of them each day and I communicate with them. That is for me unique. The ducks are not only just ducks, but they are there for a reason.
Blakely has the most difficult job at the Cincinnati Zoo. He has to play with babies all the time. He's never shown any aggression or snapped. If he gets upset, kind of like any mom would, he just leaves the room. <laughs> you are so cute. My name is Don Strasser, and we're at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens. Blakely is a five-year-old Australian Shepherd. We got him from a rescue, and I use him in a nursery as a nanny or a companion dog. This is about you when you're taking a nap. Blakely's here for the main purpose of teaching the babies the correct animal cues as they grow up, so when they are introduced back to their own kind, they know what appropriate behavior is. He teaches them how to play and how to interact. I can tell them, no, don't bite me, but I'm not an animal, and I don't give the same cues that he can. So we make a great team. Smile for the camera. For camera. <laughs> yeah, smile for the camera. <laughs> Blakely has worked with cheetahs, ocelots, a talkin, battered foxes, a warthog, wallabies, to name a few. He's working with four baby cheetahs right now. It's been a long seven weeks for him with these little cheetah cubs, and he's, I think, tired because he's on alert for 24 hours a day. If they start making too much noise, he'll come and get us like, something's not right, something's not right. He's kind of like a second set of eyes for us too. Um, a lot of times they still recognize each other, like uh, Dale the talk and he raised. When they see each other, he'll, Dale will still run up in front and grunt at him, and he'll kind of jump up on the wall, and it's kind of like, hey, how you doing? She's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I like to think I have an office, but I'm pretty sure it's his. As pessoas ficavam surpresas quando viam ele vestido. Tem a, a viseira, que é para modo de ele enxergar e para caminhar, tudo. A cauda dele, que se chama o rabo, tem o um vestido também, que é para não ter nada para as abelhas ofender. Meu nome é Manuel Juraci Vieira. Moro aqui em Monte Alegre, no município de Itatira. É o momento que isso aí foi uma coisa que a gente trabalhando com a turma de 20 pessoas da, da apicultura, aí eles, a gente trouxe um carrinho de mão para ir buscar o, as, as melgueiras lá no apiário. Aí os colegas foi, disseram, perguntaram, Jura, se dá para fazer uma roupa para o jumento trabalhar na apicultura também? Eu digo, dá. Aí eu fui, fiz, e hoje o boneco é o jumento apicultor, que hoje trabalha na apicultura aqui junto comigo, era ele. Olha, meu filho, é o seguinte, é porque a abelha, se você não tiver protegido para chegar até a elas, não adianta. E aí foi o caso de eu inventar essa roupa para ele, para poder chegar até lá e ele também. Para fazer a roupa do jumento, para ele trabalhar, foi uns 15 dias só. Foi rápido. Até porque eu tive tanta sorte que pela primeira vez que eu fui usar a roupa nele, ele não teve nada a refugar. Olha, os outros apicultores para transportar o mel deles, eles, fa eles fazem esse, essa, essa transportação com a maior dificuldade. Por quê? Porque eles não tiveram a paciência de inventar esse tipo de, 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 de trabalho que eu tive aqui. Cá, no meu modo de entender, ele é, ele é um animal que ele tem a, espe a especialidade dele. Né? Até porque dentro do trabalho que ele vive fazendo. Porque não é todos. Porque é uma coisa que em outra parte não tem. Só, só eu aqui em Itatira que tive a atenção de fazer essa roupa e deu certo. Eu, é um grande amigo. In the peak of summer in Italy, when the beaches and lakes are full of swimmers, the lifeguards keeping everyone safe bring in some much needed assistance. L'uso del cane nel salvataggio in acqua dà veramente una marcia in più al soccorritore. Il soccorritore da solo è da solo. Noi non siamo mai da soli, siamo sempre un'equipe con il nostro cane, quindi un'equipe a sei zampe. 
Sono Ferruccio Pilenga, sono presidente nazionale della scuola italiana Cani Salvataggio. È nata nel 1989 quando io ho preso un Terranova di nome Mass e ho provato a iniziare ad estrarlo per i soccorsi in acqua. Since then, Ferruccio has found that dogs make ideal lifeguard partners. They remain calm under pressure and instinctively choose the safest path through the water currents back to shore. Once in the water, they're able to keep afloat both the rescuer and the person in need. Io risparmio le energie e quindi riesco a essere un soccorritore più operativo. Io dico sempre per far capire che se per tirare una slitta servono almeno sei cani, per tirare sei persone basta un cane. Si parla circa di 20-30 salvataggi all'anno. Mediamente tutti gli anni l'elenco di salvataggi è molto nutrito. To keep up with these numbers, the school has over 350 certified rescue dogs and each year takes in new recruits. After about 18 months of training, they learn how to jump from speeding boats and helicopters safely, among other rescue techniques. Italy is the only country in the world that recognizes these certified canines as actual lifeguards. But the value of this is catching on, so the school is starting to expand abroad. Decidere se un cane è abile alla, alla, a diventare un cane di salvataggio è impossibile. A mio avviso non ci sono cani sbagliati. È chiaramente la differenza del padrone. La presenza del cane sdramatizza la cosa. Diciamo, la ricompensa a mio avviso più bella è quello che sente il cane e il padrone nel momento del salvataggio che unisce ancora in più questo rapporto tra un, un cane e un umano. <totipo>